also ein neuer Weg beschritten werden, um den Erfordernissen des Luftkampfes, besonders im Hinblick auf die großen Höhen, in denen er sich heute abspielt, gerecht zu werden. Dieser Weg bot sich in der Ausnutzung des Rückstoßes, der dann auftritt, wenn Gas unter Druck aus einer Düse ausströmt und seine Geschwindigkeit dabei stark erhöht. The shark-like predator look of the Messerschmitt Me-262, coupled with its capabilities as a combat jet aircraft in World War II, ensure this warplane will be forever fascinating. Today, with help from captured German wartime films and Army Air Force's coverage from the archives, we visit the Me-262 jet fighter. Early scenes in Germany show a test example when the design still incorporated a tailwheel. Insufficient airflow over the elevators evidently caused in part by the interaction of the downward jet exhaust deflecting off the runway made it necessary to gently tap the wheel brakes to get the jet to rotate to flight attitude where the elevators weren't blanked so the jet could take off. The fix was a nose wheel on production aircraft. Without diminishing the actual technological advances embraced by the ME-262, it is valid for the sake of accurate history to revisit some of the lore that has grown around this early jet fighter. The modestly swept wing of the ME-262, far from being a deliberate effort to tame compressibility and coax more speed from the airframe, was actually a compromise made in its design to accommodate development issues with the jet engines. The early concept for the Messerschmitt ME-262 envisioned a straight-wing jet fighter with engines mounted fairly far outboard on the wings. During the design and development of the fighter, the size and weight of the intended BMW turbojet engines grew. This made the original relationship of wing, fuselage, and engine unsuitable for center of gravity. Relocating the wing would have demanded substantial redesign work, so Messerschmitt swept the outer wing panels 18.5 degrees. A simple fix. The wing out to the engine was the original straight wing design with an added leading edge fairing. This placed the heavy engines farther to the rear thus moving the center of gravity and center of pressure aft and within bounds. Production ME-262s flew with Junkers UMO-004 turbojet engines. Boeing engineer George Shirer uncovered scientific papers in Germany at war's end that touted the advantages of swept wings for high-speed aircraft, and this discovery proved to be a shortcut for development of such aircraft as the B-47 Stratojet and F-86 Sabre. Similar research was already conducted in the U.S. at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, by Robert T. Jones. Jones' findings would have gone public shortly anyway, regardless of the discovered German papers. The translation of German swept-wing technology had short-term benefits, but the U.S. ultimately would have achieved similar results from the insights of Robert Jones and the NACA. The deliberate sweeping of wings for high-speed benefits had a sweet spot of 35 degrees, far greater than that of the ME-262. A proposed Messerschmitt variant with 35-degree sweep went unbuilt by war's end. It is well to remember that the contemporaneous American P-80 Shooting Star jet fighter and Britain's de Havilland Vampire jet both had straight wings and both exceeded 500 miles per hour. There is a quirky adaptation from the ME-262's wing that benefited the North American Aviation F-86 Sabre's swept wing in the late 1940s. The Sabre evolved a 35-degree sweep, considered optimal in some of the German studies. But such a drastic sweep caused control problems at high angles of attack. Even the gentler 18.5-degree sweep of the ME-262 relied on automatic extending leading-edge slats to tame this problem. Wright Field shipped a set of ME-262 wings to North American Aviation in California for detailed exploration of the slat operation. As the North American design team wrestled with the new world of swept-wing aerodynamics and transonic flight phenomena, they studied the ingenious geometry of motion in the Messerschmitt leading-edge slats and wind tunnel tested more than 100 variations before achieving the right automatic operation for the F-86. If jet aircraft development quickly outpaced the ME-262 in the post-war era, some baseline performance for jet fighter models available by 1945 is illuminating. Later models of British and American jets had faster speeds and more powerful engines. The ME-262 engaged in combat as early as July 1944. 
Its speed and firepower were worrisome for 8th Air Force strategic bombardment planners, but persistent Allied attacks on Messerschmitt factories, component suppliers, railroads, and petroleum sources, plus aggressive fighter attacks that sometimes caught the German jets in slower flight during takeoffs or landings, took a toll of operational ME-262s. The total number of ME-262s available for combat in April 1945 was less than 200 aircraft out of more than 1,200 delivered to the Luftwaffe. American production capacity meant a war of attrition favored the U.S. and Allies in 1945. The rakish Messerschmitt ME-262 was a startling adversary beginning in the summer of 1944, but its rush into the turbojet future of aviation ultimately saw this pioneering German jet quickly outmoded and superseded by Allied jet aircraft, many of which would fight the next war in Korea several years later. And that sleek post-war F-86 Sabre with the trend-setting 35-degree swept wing proved capable of supersonic flight in a shallow dive. I'm Fred Johnson for the Air Rail Images channel. Thank you for watching and thanks especially for giving this video a thumbs up. We appreciate it.